like we are rolling, right? All right, Phil. Uh, again, thank you for indulging me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. This past year, I was lucky enough to be the post PA for Succession uh, for their final season, and um, I thought it'd be really cool to um, interview these editors I got to work with. Um, and just working with them, it was such a cool experience. I learned so much, so I kind of wanted to make something just to kind of give insight into that world because I feel like not many people that uh, know about posts or even people that want to get into posts don't know about the post industry and how it works, especially for people that want to be editors. So I wanted to create a cool video where it just shows like, hey, this is how post production works, this is how it is to be an editor, uh, assistant editor, especially for these, you know, Emmy winning editors and, you know, have been in the industry for years and are so skilled in their craft. So I just thought it'd be a good, you know, just learning experience for people that are in the film industry who aren't and, you know, for just me to look back on because I thought it was just cool to work with this, you know, great group of people um you know so thank you for to the post team and you know all the other um people part of succession it was such a pleasure to be part of the show and i hope you guys enjoy uh, my name is bill henry and i'm one of three editors on season four of succession hi my name is venue brook and i'm an assistant editor in scripted television, currently working on Succession Season 4. Uh, hey, I'm Andrew Pang, and uh, I'm uh, an assistant editor and currently working on Succession. I was always into the post process. There was something about pulling everything together that was the most satisfying for me, and really like, you know, getting that fusion of sound effects, music, image. I started uh, as soon as I got out of college. I was an art history major. I'm a little bit of a Nepo baby in that my mom's cousin was a director, and he sort of proposed that uh, Maybe I come to California because I just didn't really know what I wanted to do within the film business. But I sort of thought a good starting place would be in the editing room because you sort of see everything that comes in and then you see how it gets turned out the other side. About six weeks later, the producer caught wind that I was actually related to the director and he didn't like my uh, cousin very much. So he was just like, we don't need an apprentice anymore. So I became the driver, which was fine. So I learned how, where I sort of got a crash course in driving around Los Angeles. And then I just, yeah, one thing led to another and I stayed out there and, and just kept sort of, I must have liked it. <laughs> I started off as a post PA and kind of, I mean, my goal was to do my normal job, my normal hours, and then try to use every opportunity to just spend as much time in the room with the editors that I could. It was interesting. Everything kind of collided at once. I was a little bit older. I had been in New York for a while as an actor. Um, I had a desire to kind of tell my own stories, but I also had a very close friend who had a movie um, that he made that was very successful. He's actually a very successful director and writer right now. And that also inspired me to really look into post-production. Really the, the main gist of getting involved in post was um, uh, so that I could create my own pieces. Harken back to this idea of, of sports too. It's about being a team player, whatever it takes. And specifically, in my role as the assistant editor, is to me is to support the editor. And what I like to say is to create the palette so that they can just work and create freely. So it's doing all that prep work to make everything presentable and organizing everything into specific scene bins and then breaking down the dialogue in a way that they can review it quickly. Um, and uh, supporting the editor um, uh, from a technical standpoint in, for every step of the, uh, of the process. The biggest element that Venue brought to the table was doing his soundscapes. 
is a very advanced library, and I uh, really, he, he just, out of his own impetus to do it, and is so, just loves sound so much, uh, when I finish a cut, he will take it and he will create whatever needs to be done and does backgrounds and 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 sweet sound effects sweeteners and all of that. All editors have different preferences, generally the same, but they, they do have their own peculiarities. Um, uh, so making sure that every day they have their scenes prepared so they can start their work. I'm there to support any sound issues basically handle any of the technical aspects. Also uh, throughout the editing process, helping with uh, any temp visual effects work and opticals. And then once the episode has been reviewed and gone through its editor's cut, director's cut, producer's cut, studio network cuts, and once it's picture locked, then it's our responsibility to then m organize the sequence in a way that the other vendors, the sound team, visual effects and music teams can then receive that sequence and have everything be clear and having everything have everything be easy to navigate and understand what our intentions were but creatively with the sequence. Any young editor, a sort of making their way up, I know that everybody's sort of chomping at the bit to start cutting that picture. But the way I got attention when I was starting out was that I did sort of the same thing. It was like I was given these tasks where I would have to create, you know, a soundscape for a sequence and 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 it is storytelling, you know, cutting that sound and and I really came to rely on him to sort of know that 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 part of it is a very a very important element within the storytelling. The, um, the standard for the industry is Avid, and uh, one of the main reasons is because of how it deals with storage. It's a, they were really able to figure out how we can all access the same media at the same time. We can have five or six rooms doing that. Back in the day with Final Cut Pro, you couldn't. You could only work on local drives. They did try to expand it, but it never really transferred over so definitely and a very important skill for an assistant editor is to especially if you want to get involved in narrative is to learn avid industry standard it seems like it is avid and some projects do adobe premiere pro but i think avid it's so um endless in terms of what you can learn from it um i definitely think it's you know like people with years and years of experience learn new tricks you know, whether they're technical or creative, learn new tricks on the Avid all the time. There are other filmmakers who prefer to use Premiere. Not a lot, but there are some. And I would have to say a good majority of the unionized assistant editors don't really know Premiere. Now when I say that, knowing Premiere, Adobe Premiere, and how to cut and assemble something is one thing. I can do that. But to understand the technical aspects of the organizational stuff, that's a different area. And um, to have an understanding like that, that could maybe open a door for you. Because I've se actually seen where there was an opportunity for an assistant editor to be hired, and it was for Adobe Premiere, and many people couldn't jump in on it because they didn't know it. But yet there was this young kid who had just gotten out of school who knew it very well, knew all the organizational aspects, and that led to that person um, uh, becoming assistant and joining the union right away and now they've moved on and moved on to doing Avid. One thing that I'm always, in, that, I, that I've been encouraged to learn but I haven't been as uh, proactive about it myself is uh, After Effects because that just unlocks a world of possibilities for doing temp VFX. Knowing After Effects um, can be a valuable tool because sometimes on these uh, projects they're looking for a person who can not only deal with Avid software, but can also maybe work on a, um, a, a visual effect on uh, After Effects. It, it's just an important asset. Asset. So I would say, I would say Avid, Adobe Premiere, and After Effects. But I would say After Effects should be part of all of those things. I would say work on your After Effects and get very strong on Avid, and I think you'd be pretty set up.
it's great to work on a show like Succession. You know, I think many of us that get involved in post-production and storytelling, uh, you know, we're inspired by some of the great movies that we've seen, whether it be Star Wars or Citizen Kane and, and things like that. It's like those stories have inspired us. They, they capture something inside of us and inevitably I think we all want to be a part of it. Um, and with Succession, what's so great about it is that it's a really relevant program that a lot of people love and they enjoy. And um, you know, the longer that you work in post-production or in storytelling, I mean, the reality is it's not every project is going to be like a Succession or like a Star Wars. A lot of them, it's maybe like one out of 10 if you're lucky. It's let me grow in my career, I think, more than any other, um, more, more than any other job, and giving me, giving me this like, uh, has like I guess entrusted me creatively with a lot of things. And this is a very challenging show, and it creates a lot of opportunities for growth. We all need to kind of support each other past what sort of just our episodes are and just our base responsibilities are. We have to go past those to really make this show work. I think because this is a, like, first of all, a creatively, a creatively challenging show, um, and also, you know, in terms of how, like, and creatively in terms of the camera work, nothing ever matches. <laughs> um, you know, it's always a new angle in every single setup. The camera's always moving, the actors are always trying new stuff, and you're trying to build something. You're trying to build a continuous sequence out of that. Obviously, that will, like, throw you into the fire in terms of learning how to assemble scenes and getting really creative with your approaches with stuff that doesn't necessarily match. When there are more people in a room, the more challenging it becomes because you start having to clock so many different people and everybody's got, you know, as, as everyone knows in this show, everybody's got an agenda within any given uh, situation. And so I think the biggest challenges have always been the big dinner sequences or the breakfast in episode 10 of season two on the boat. I mean, those were always the most challenging things to sort of put together. It's about sort of laying up people paying attention to other people talking about things that affect them in ways and sort of planting those seeds visually earlier before they start interjecting themselves into a scene. Um, uh, with their own, you know, set of lines, whatever they, whatever they may be. I, I can control how tight or how loose those moments are, and that is very satisfying to sort of be um, in command of that sort of thing within the construct of a scene and storytelling. Uh, the added aspect of working on Succession, and um, it's kind of the, the gray matter that people sometimes don't necessarily think about. It's a great show, but it's an incredibly great team, and I've been affiliated with just two seasons, and everyone up and down the ladder are just so great, so generous, so supportive. And, um, you know, from my perspective as an assistant editor, I'm not in the meat and potatoes of the creative process, but just to observe um, someone like Jesse Armstrong and see how well he collaborates and puts a show together, it's, uh, it's just great. The other thing I mean, about the team and the creatives, it's such a supportive and sort of understanding creative environment in that, like Mark and Jesse, they don't roll over the editorial team with their own specific preferences for each scene. It's incredibly collaborative, it tends to be rare sometimes yeah definitely not not every show is like that and now uh getting to um the man of the hour episode 403 series what it seems very bad i'm so sorry quite no rome he's not okay How was it uh, tackling that episode? Like, were you intimidated when you knew that you were going to be tackling that episode or read the script? Or? Yeah, I mean, I, I read the script very late at night 
um, at the end of July, right before I was about to start, Dara sent it to me and she was like, oh God, please get in touch with me. As soon as you read this, I'm really eager to hear what you think. And I think, and now, you know, looking back on it, I understand she'd been carrying it around for a while. She knew what the, tr what the track of the season was and she knew that it was happening in three. And because none of us were allowed to say anything for so long, I think I, I could totally understand why she was so eager for to hear my my input and I also remember going through and being like my god this scene just goes on and on and on and on and it is it was like a 28 page scene scene 10 11 um, so yeah it, it was but like anything I think that you just I just it, it's you just break it down and you just sort of like you get in there and you and you just go piece by piece by piece so I built the boat out first as a single sequence and as if there would be no cuts in it. Which is sort of interesting because when I was reading it the first time, I thought, I wonder how much of this they're going to want or how much Jesse and Mark are gonna to wanna, to, you know, do on the plane as opposed to being on the boat. And of course that became the, the big the big question about the execution of the sequence was how much were we going to spend on the plane and how much were we going to spend on the boat. And I mean, I always knew that it was going to be more weighted on the kids on the boat, obviously, because that was the emotional punch of the scene. But there was a lot of sort of interesting, exciting stuff on the plane that was going on. And it could have probably, there were versions of it where it was very sort of dynamic and, and a little bit more, um, I don't want to say actiony, but it had just a, a little bit more back and forth that gave, you know, sort of allowed me to contract, you know, the pauses on the boat and, you know, just sort of keep the whole thing moving rapidly. I mean, in my first pass, I did, I did sort of spend some more time with Tom closer to Logan with the phone. And then Jesse thought that it would be more interesting or as, uh, to sort of keep a, more of a distance um, in terms of our perspective of what was going on in the front cabin with Logan. Uh, and so that, um, which I thought was a really interesting note because I think like the kids being removed on the boat, I think keeping the audience removed from the action also lent a certain amount of tension and, and sort of mystery to it that benefited the sequence. Um, and then when we started getting closer, I mean, uh, the, the only time that we actually have see Logan is in a four shot and shot from behind him over his head um, with a crew um, performing the performing the chest compressions and it's when he's on the phone to Shiv or Shiv is on the phone to him I should correct that she's doing all the talking he's pretty much gone at that point I think and so that had a real emotional punch I think that uh, was was very carefully sort of calibrated there was a time where I had sort of Tom listening uh, to the Shiv, and then there was a shot of Carrie listening to Shiv, talking to her father, which was an interesting element because there was such an intimate moment, and then I think she gave this great beat where she feels, felt sort of uncomfortable with what she was having to listen to. But in the end, I think that where we landed was, 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 was right on. Like just go go into every editor's room, get to know them well, um, ask a lot of questions. Like I may have been promoted to an apprentice because I did my base job as a PA well. You know, he's a great person, he's got a great personality, so we want to promote him to an apprentice. Like that may have happened, but I, I do think that I was much more prepared for the opportunities that were presented to me as an apprentice by um, learning a lot of the stuff that I did um, on the Abbott as a PA. It doesn't even have to be specifically at work. It can be with your own projects. It can be like with a short film that you decide to cut with you know a group of friends or other film students. But whatever, you know, it's, it's like that sort of two two-sided effort of getting on the Avid and getting familiar with the Avid yourself 
and developing your own system on it and learning the software in general. And parallel to that, getting to know the editors and sort of getting them to sort of sprinkle on you sort you know assignments consistent with the project that they're on like professionally then you know what i mean once like i feel like people notice that effort and notice that ability they'll you know it's 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 a very quick process from there in terms of moving forward i think that when an ad, when i recognize um in an AE that they're really, you know, enthusiastic about the process, about what's being made currently and talking about things that they enjoy watching and um, that sort of gets me excited. But like I said, it's just like, you know, them showing the initiative to take what may seem like a very sort of straightforward, simple thing like put a door close on or background in a party or whatever and not necessarily taking the first thing they find in the sound library and really looking for something that suits the particular scene that you're in and and I like I said I often find that so many uh, or I find that I've come across this in talking to other colleagues that they just you know don't necessarily want to to do that, all they really are interested in. Let me cut the picture, let me cut the picture. And yeah, you'll get there, but I mean, until you sort of, in my estimation, really show initiative with doing that, doing the sound work well, and playing and, you know, saying, oh, you know, I tried this piece of music here, or, di or this, that, and the other thing, uh, that, uh, that those sorts of um, acts of uh, independent thinking and, and trying hard to make what is seemingly a, a, a very sort of mundane part of the process. Uh, make it really the best you can and then it just it just builds up this sort of level of um, confidence. This world that you get involved in, it's about problem solving. You don't walk into a day on this job where everything is smooth and everything works out fine even on the biggest, highest budget ever, there are issues. But if there were no problems, there would be no jobs. And the problems, when I talk about it, I talk about the technical aspects of things coming in, something is out of sync, issue with the picture, whatever. But also too, the editor is dealing with aspects too of like, how come they shot that two shot like that? Why didn't they capture it like this, blah, blah, blah. So their whole idea is dealing with the footage. So every day you're dealing with the problem is that when you're presented with these problems, there is a certain groundedness, calmness about approaching it and dealing with it, and, and matter-of-factness of like, okay, so this happened, so how do we figure this out, blah, 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 blah. And uh, that's important, and um, that also harkens back to my idea of, of being collaborative. I think um, it's really important to know that you are part of a team and that you're all working together. and. And definitely in post-production and even in production, there is a certain hierarchy and respecting that, but collaborating within that hierarchy and knowing that um, uh, it's important uh, the, the relationships with these, these people that you have and that working together, hopefully um, you get to the best story you can. And honestly, that's the most rewarding is when you all work together and um, uh, you you have this product, this story that you can all be proud of. That's the most satisfying thing that um, you can have. Finally, uh, do you have any just like final thoughts? You gave some great words of wisdom. Just any general uh, <laughs> final thoughts? <laughs> oh God, I don't know. I think this is great. <laughs> I mean, you seem very passionate about this, and you know, it's it's great to see. It's great to see this, and. You know, I'm excited to see what you do with it, and Thanks. you know, and just, you know, I think the more of this that you can do, like I think, you know, people already like really like you and they trust you, and you kind of, um, I know you're asking for like general words, not not. No, <laughs> but, but, hey, I, I'll take compliments as well. Okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. No, no, <laughs> you've done a fantastic job, man. And like, uh, one of the first things I was told as as a PA. Mm -hmm. By a producer, but she said, if you can handle doing lunch as well, like you could, you can handle producing. Like you could do that well. <laughs> and that's like the way that people handle lunches is 
very reflective of the way that they're going to handle other tasks later on down the line that are, you know, more than lunches and just involve this. And from what I've noticed from you is that flexibility. Uh, but yeah, any like kind of final thoughts or words of wisdom? Mmm, Tyler. <laughs> well, you've already proven yourself, Tyler, because you ever, you're always getting the lunch orders right, which is <laughs> also another element of your, you know, getting getting up that chain. You know, people are like, oh, so I got the food order wrong. Well, yeah, are you gonna get the dailies wrong? Yeah, are you gonna yeah, do? No. Are you gonna do that wrong too? And the idea that oh, it's no big deal. <laughs> Because every, you know, every sort of, every task is uh, is an important one and you want to, you know, you want to do it cleanly and double check your work and all that and, and that would be, you know, you know, just be vigilant in trying to do, put your best foot forward and do your best work and, and eventually, you know, you'll develop a reputation for being dependent on and you'll keep moving up the food chain. But now it's like now it's up to you to put in that effort, which it sounds like you're doing and you're making a goal to do, to basically be as prepared as you can for when you enter that first job, you know, and say that, hey, look, on that last one, this is what I learned how to do. I did an export, did a turnover, I know how to do a sound turnover, I know how to do an online turnover, you know, cut a scene, work with some music, blah, 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 you know, but you at least have those like, you can always say you've you've done it and when you're given a you know that in the real sense on a real you know on a project where you're hired for that role you'll be that much more prepared to like pick it up you know and do it so yeah man so, thanks man excited yeah, for your journey it. It great. <laughs> amazing Andy great job you say that to everyone <laughs> thanks dude I hope it works out yeah man it was awesome thank you so much for indulging me of course dude it's good it's great that you're doing it. I think it's a very good thing, dude.